All right, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I just introduced myself, so I think you all know who I am, but um, very excited to be here. Again, this is now my third year at the Home Care Cooperatives Conference, and um, I just love being here. I look forward to this all year. I love being in the room with all of you, reconnecting and connecting with new people, and um, I just feel so inspired. I hope you all are starting to feel that as well. Um, it's just so much energy in this room, and it's also very humbling. You know, the challenges are big, and we still have a lot of work to do. But um, you know, excited to share today the results of our 2019 um, Home Care Cooperative Benchmarking Survey. Now, the second annual that we've done, and you know, intend to do this year over year to track where we're, where we're going. So let's leave to a little bit of my fire here, but I want to thank everyone so much for uh, spending the time, putting in the effort to complete the survey. Um, the cooperative spent about an hour and a half um, doing this. Uh, we asked some really detailed questions, um, but it's just so incredibly important. Um, the information that we're getting is really going to help us all, so thank you for that. Um, and I have to also definitely thank my teammates, um, Ivona and Nick, who did a ton of work um, sort of processing and analyzing this information and getting ready uh, to present it here today. So thank you to you guys as well. Um, as Leslie said, this information really matters. Um, we hope that not only are you filling out the survey for the sector, um, but that you're really looking at this as an opportunity to look at where your cooperative is year over year and how you're doing. Um, and really use it as an opportunity to track um, you know, the successes and also the areas of continued challenge um, that you want to work on. Um, but from an external perspective, um, you know, so it's really important for us to be able to track where we are as a sector, what are the successes again, what are the continued challenges, allows us to identify where we need to do more work, what resources we have to develop, et cetera. Um, and then importantly, really provides a proof of concept um, so, you know, we all talk about how cooperatives are better and how there's this cooperative difference in home care. And we know that that's meaningful, we know that that's true, but unless we can prove it, um, a lot of people are going to sort of look at us with the skeptical eye. So, um, allows us to provide that proof of concept and really put some, some numbers behind what we're talking about. Um, and it's also an incredibly important um, sort of factor of uh, points of data for continued funding. We want continued funding and we need funding to be able to continue to do this work, move us all forward and kind of get home care cooperatives to where we know um, they can be. So just a quick snapshot of this year's survey. Um, so again, second annual, um, we had 13 cooperatives respond to the survey. Um, 10 of the cooperatives that responded were in operation for the full calendar year 2018, which is what the results are based on. Um, we also had one new startup cooperative, or one new launched cooperative, Soaring Independent in Madison, Wisconsin, which, um, which responded, and then two startups, Ridgeline and Okanagan, based in Washington, um, that sort of provided their, their basic data. Um, just because of the, the calendar year and sort of how we structured um, the data, we uh, will only be able to present on the results of nine of the cooperatives, so nine cooperatives based in seven states is the base of the data. Um, that I'll be presenting. Um, and a lot of the survey was the same. We repeated a lot of the same questions, but then also really built on what we did last year. We did expand out the survey um, just to really get into more of the details of, um, you know, what is this home care cooperative difference and also, you know, where are we? What's the health and status of the sector? Um, just to note that sort of in addition to... <laughs> Uh, but in addition to presenting the results today, um, we will also be um, putting out a number of public facing documents. We're sort of working on those now. Um, we're going to share them out with everyone. You should all feel free to use them, try and garner some press, and you know, just kind of generate more and more interest in, in what we're doing. Um, but also, we're going to be working on um, a cooperative scorecard, so to speak, um, where we're going to try and issue out individual reports to each of the cooperatives where you can really look at specifically on your individual level um, where you are sort of sitting in relation to the sector as a whole. So that's something we're going to be working on in the, in the coming months, so stay tuned for that. So let's jump into um, first sort of a scan of the landscape. 
So in uh, 2018, again, calendar year 2018, there were 11 operational home care cooperatives across eight states, plus one new launch cooperative um, mid-year, and then numerous startups. So, you know, I mean, many of you are here today. Um, there's so much buzz right now in the space, and we're just seeing more and more and more people coming um, and asking, you know, how can I start up? Um, you know, how do I make this happen? So it's very exciting. I think we're definitely seeing that we're like in an important, important moment for home care cooperatives and that this, this space is about to really take off. Um, you know, again, just to sort of reiterate, only nine for the survey. Um, small but mighty. <laughs> you know, we are a small group, but that doesn't mean anything, and we're growing. Um, but just to sort of see where we are, you know, we are a very diverse group. So six of the agencies are private pay only. Um, one's private pay and VA, so Veterans Administration. Uh, we have three agencies that are primarily public pay, but also serve private pay, VA, or you know other funders. We have one which is primarily grant supported at this time. Four of the cooperatives are rurally based per sort of USDA um, guidelines, and then seven urban. Um, and nine of the 11 uh, home care cooperatives right now have less than 50 employees or less than 50 <coughs> caregivers. So we're still operating in largely a small space, but they're definitely growing. So in calendar year 2018, home care cooperatives employ just over 2,400 workers. Um, this was actually a little bit of a decline from 2017 of about 143 employees. Um, and what we saw is that that was basically just a mix of, um, you know, business operational regulatory challenges across cooperatives. So, um, you know, a little bit disappointing, but it's okay. <laughs> there are bumps in the road. And we know we're moving. We're moving ahead. Um, our nine home care cooperatives completed just over 3.2 million client hours and generated $76.6 million uh, in revenue from, from that work. 94% um, of that was represented by public pay, primarily Medicaid dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. So looking behind the numbers at client hours, what we saw is that actually there was a little bit of a decrease in client hours of 6% um, from 2017 to 2018. Um, you know, again, sort of a mix of operational business and regulatory challenges. Um, but looking at uh, sort of the more granular level, we saw that four cooperatives saw increases in client hours while five saw decreases in 2018. Looking at revenue, we actually saw that revenue did increase by 9%. Um, that was driven entirely by um, increases in public pay and largely driven by increases in um, minimum, minimum wage uh, rates. So that was what drove that up. We did see at the same time an 18% decrease in private pay revenue. Um, again, that same sort of mix of challenges across cooperatives. Um, but really looking then again at the granular level, we saw that five cooperatives saw increases in revenue while four saw decreases in 2018. Looking at ownership, um, ownership relatively stayed the same or basically the same. Um, the average rate of ownership at home care cooperatives is 47% this year. It was 48% last year, so you know, it's really a, a minimal difference. And the rate of ownership at cooperatives with if there were fewer employees stayed the same at 72%. So I'm really looking into the cooperative difference for our proof of concept. So within home care, we really see basically four primary pillars of what makes up this cooperative difference in home care. There are so many things, of course, that make a home care cooperative what it is and that make it special, but these are sort of like the high level things that we see that really stand out and um, that we can celebrate as a movement that make us different and better. So those are caregiver turnover and tenure, wages and benefits, training and on-the-job supports, and then leadership and career advancement opportunities. So looking first at caregiver turnover and tenure, um, you know, again, home care cooperatives really stood out and sort of blew the industry out of the water this year with caregiver turnover. Um, so the rate this year, the average rate of turnover was 38% uh, versus 82% in the industry as a whole. That's definitely something to celebrate. 
I think when you sort of take the next level down, look a little bit deeper behind the numbers, what you see is not only is that number a lot lower, but also the rate of increase was much lower. So home care cooperatives did see an increase of 8%, but the industry as a whole saw an increase of 15%. Um, and then the range of turnover is 20% to 65% in home care cooperatives. So, you know, these are range. But, um, you know, one thing I think that's really interesting to note, I was looking at the, um, the Home Care Pulse Benchmarking Survey of the industry as a whole, and the five sort of lowest performing um, percentage of agencies saw a turnover of 215%. Um, so there's a very wide range from 65% to 215%. And so, uh, you know, cooperatives are really performing significantly better uh, across the board on this metric. Um, and when you consider that the cost of turnover is estimated at $2,600 per employee, as a huge financial savings, as in addition to the many other benefits that come from having um, lower turnover, just the, the cost of having to post ads, hire, you know, do all of the onboarding and everything. It's a big undertaking, as you know, um, to bring on new people. Looking at tenure, um, so the average tenure at home care cooperatives in the same 2018 period was 23 months on average, and 16 months was the median. Um, the national median at all agencies is actually 15 months, so that was a little bit surprising, so we're about one month above that. Um, we unfortunately don't know the average in the industry, it's just not a metric that's sort of readily available, so it's hard to compare on there. I think here what's more telling is to really look at the range um, we have a range of six months all the way to 65 months, so we're really talking about people on that end who are committing to a career um, at their home care cooperatives. Um, and I think one thing that's really important to note here is that a lot of the cooperatives are new. Um, we've had, of the nine that are sort of surveyed here that, that we're basing the results on, um, four were launched within the calendar year 2016. So. I think as the years go on, we're going to see these numbers continue to go up and up and up. Um, and so I don't know that this is necessarily, you know, sort of the low end is reflective of something wrong in the cooperatives. Rather, a lot of the cooperatives are actually just new and still just getting established and getting ramped up. Um, I think the other thing that's important to note here is that, um, you know, what, what goes into tenure, there's so many factors. Wages is certainly one. But really what we find is that the, um, the cooperatives that have the best tenure, the best results in tenure, and have the strongest uh, cooperative cultures. They do a lot around member engagement. It is not about wages. So sure, that's important, of course. Um, but that's just sort of an interesting thing to, to think about for your own cooperatives. So now moving into wages and benefits. So in 2018, on average, home care cooperatives paid 54 cents more per hour than their non-cooperative uh, sort of competitive agencies, competitor agencies in the state. So if you were here last year, you may remember a higher number. We had reported an average of a dollar four. Um, this year, just getting the data earlier, having better data, you know, being able to spend more time on it and really like look at a very granular level of what's happening. This is the number that we were able to come up with and it's not as rosy, but it is better and it's more accurate. So. Um, this is representative of the average across the seven states that we really were able to drill into. So again, looking a little bit deeper at the numbers, what we see is that within those seven states where our cooperatives are operating, overall wage increases were 22 cents per hour at home care cooperatives, and actually 49% um, within non-cooperative agencies. So, Sort of the key takeaway there is that while cooperatives are currently paying about 50, 50 cents more per hour, the larger industry is starting to catch up. Um, you know, I think there is now suddenly, amazingly, some sort of awakening that <laughs> caregivers are important and hey, we should probably you know, pay them more money and treat them better, um, which is a good thing, of course, um, but you know, sort of makes our work a little more challenging, right? We have to continually up our game. So now looking at sort of pillars three and four, training and on-the-job supports, and also leadership and career advancement opportunities. You know, these are you know sort of the softer um, pieces, the softer factors that really contribute in particular to turnover and tenure. Um, so just kind of looking at, at the numbers here. So eight of nine cooperatives go above state minimum required caregiver training, um, offer board training, so on things like um, 
you know, business finance, cooperative governance, cooperative business, um, offer opportunities for administrative and office work to be able to experience the other side of, of running a business, um, organize team building and social events. Seven of nine cooperatives offer caregiver coaching and provide peer mentors, um, something that we know is incredibly important to caregiver tenure and just the ability to successfully do your job. Six of nine cooperatives pay for training time, um, provide opportunities for speaking engagement and advocacy work, something we only spent a lot of time talking about yesterday and hearing the importance of that um, for caregivers. And then six of nine provide opportunities to engage in member committees and really dive more deeply into, um, into their cooperative business. And then five of nine cooperatives provide short-term financial support for caregivers experiencing personal emergencies. Um, this is something that's very hard to do. It's not an easy benefit, but I think really speaks to how home care cooperatives care for the whole person. You know, not just thinking about caregivers as workers, but really caring about the individual and doing whatever they can um, to try and help them be successful in their jobs and, and just in life. So finally, reflective of the cooperative difference, this is a you know, slightly different um, uh, you know, sort of theme here, but um, looking at uh, sort of referral sources and recruitment, um, eight of nine cooperatives noted that word of mouth was one of their top three client recruitment channels. And six of nine noted um, referrals from caregivers as being the number one source of caregiver recruitment for their agency. So this really just speaks to um, you know, the power of relationships, um, the impact that cooperatives are having, and really that, that cooperatives are um, you know, their own best referral sort of sales marketing tool. You just have to kind of get out there and get that message out there more. Okay. So looking now at challenges and opportunities and looking ahead. So I think unsurprisingly, cooperatives face similar challenges to the industry as a whole. Um, we know home care cooperatives are not immune from the larger market, um, so experiencing a lot of the same things. Um, so four of nine cooperatives noted that client acquisition was their number one challenge in 2018, and three of nine noted caregiver recruitment as being their number one challenge. Um, the other number one challenges that were flagged were, um, were rates, adequate rates to be able to um, you know, pay, pay for staff and pay for the business, and then also caregiver retention. So you know, again, those are all things felt by the larger industry and certainly very much felt um, by our cooperatives. I think interestingly, in particular, thinking about the fact that client recruitment was the number one challenge for a large number of co-ops. Um, only three of nine cooperatives use social media to attract clients. Only two of nine use search engine optimization to recruit clients, which is actually the number one industry source. And only one of nine use lead sites like care.com, which are expensive and not necessarily effective, but it's important to sort of note where we sit in relation to the industry. Um, so I think what this tells us is that there's a lot of opportunity for, for growth and for improvement to be able to step into these spaces and to be able to really stand out and say, hey, you know, we are a better service. Thinking about the challenge of caregiver recruitment, this is a place where I think we really can leverage the cooperative difference. I know that this is something you all already do, but really just driving home how working in a home care cooperative is different and better. Um, we have a lot of shared tools out there. A couple of years ago, CBF had um, commissioned this recruitment and outreach toolkit, which lives on the CBF website and has incredible information as well as uh, you know, professionally prepared ads and uh, you know social media blasts and things like that that you can all use um, in your recruitment efforts. So I encourage you all to go back to that if you haven't or if you haven't seen it to check that out. And then there's a ton of industry best practices. So Lee Davis will speak uh, after me. I subscribe to his uh, daily email or roughly daily email and get a ton of great tips on you know just little things to think about. Are you doing this? Are you doing that? You know this is what the industry is doing. That's not working. Um, Home Care Pulse is another fantastic source. They're constantly putting out um, good articles and tips on caregiver recruitment, caregiver retention, you know, marketing and sales. So there's just a lot of information out there. Um, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. In particular, if you sort of subscribe to these things, you can just check them out as you have time. I think sort of the, the ultimate message is that we're stronger together. Um, 
you know, there's so much that we can do working together. At Jakala, Georgia, we had such a great conversation last night, and we were sort of looking over the dining room and saying, like, look at this group of people. You know, yeah, there's only 12 cooperatives now, but this is an incredible group of passionate, creative, smart, hardworking people. We're all so committed to making a difference. So we need to work together. We need to kind of get out of our silos and, um, and take advantage of that, you know, pull together. There's a ton of resources on CDF's website coming together like this every year. We have the, the bi-monthly peer exchange and technical assistance calls. I mean, those are for you, so tell us what you need. We will bring the resources. Um, and then just to note that after this conference, ICA is going to begin working on a feasibility study for a sort of secondary cooperative, shared services cooperative, um, thinking about how we can really collectively pool um, resources to kind of move this work forward. So we'll be looking forward to sharing that. So I think, you know, looking ahead to 2019, uh, you know, well, calendar year 2019, 2020, um, in real life, you know, I think, I think we have our marching orders. I think we know, we know what we need to do. We know what the challenges are. We know where we want to get. And so we just kind of have to keep on pushing, you know? I think, I think we're going to get there. So thank you very much. And, uh,